you're actually involved in educating the process. Yeah, without a doubt. I got to show you. Every day I'm hustling from the day we came in the game and we still are. And there's so much more to do and I won't be satisfied until I've done something that's never been seen. How you? Welcome to the promise. <laughs> What's going on, boss? Everything good? Welcome Everything good? to the promise, man. Everything good. Man. Yeah, yeah, Everything yeah. Everything wonderful. Thank you for the hospitality. Good. It's too easy. <laughs> What's up, brothers? Good, brother. How you? We blessed, baby. We blessed. That's it. That's it. We here. As long as we here. <laughs> as long as we here. You know what I'm saying? It's only right. Welcome to the promised land. Toast to all the hustlers, you know what I'm saying? The last time we met, we was, we was uh, on stage together. Yeah, we was on stage. In Miami. Yeah, Miami. him 500. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Magical yeah. moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, that's Very moment. magical moment. He's going to yeah. make some more history. That's my boy. I told him to pull up today, but he couldn't make it. He getting some money somewhere, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's a good thing. You already you know, know that. As long as you staying busy, stay busy. That's a fact. Stay busy. That's a fact. You ain't got shit to do. Make up something to do. That's a bar. Yeah. I got here, I thought of the Palace of Facade. You always hear about the Palace of Facade growing up, and I'm like, this is like our Palace of Facade. Like, it's like a destination. Yeah, it's a moment. It's Why a moment. not? Exactly. Yeah. Why not? Exactly. I was, a little I, spin on it called it El Palacio. <laughs> 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 it's crazy. Like, you hear the stories. I, I, I watched the horses that came in. I remember when you was in the trees looking down at the whole landscape. So it's like, it's incredible. And then uh, the lake in the front, I'm like, I remember you telling us that. I'm like, wow, this is actually happening. Right I right actually now. had the lake dug up. Right. Took out everything I ain't want so we could refill it up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Put the fish in that we want so we could pull out exactly what my mama want to eat. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Oh, we ain't filming that? Well, we are, yeah. but I just want you to take a seat. You're like standing up, you know. Oh, yeah, that's how you get the best out of Rosé. <laughs> 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 I, 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 I thought that chair looked real comfortable, so. Oh, it I'm is. Sure it. Those, it's zones, though. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Gotta got, got create the vibe. Yeah, yeah, it's zones. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Well, when I'm here, ready, feel free to take a seat, and it's just going to be a natural conversation. Well, let's do it. Let's sit down. <laughs> she's the she's the boss. She's yeah. The, I see. We, we just follow direction. That's yeah. it. Boss meet the boss. I see. I see. I see. I see. I see. Somebody can see you on the line. <laughs> All right. First and foremost, the biggest boss, Rick Ross, Rose. Thank you for inviting us for having us at the Promised Land. This is a this is an extremely inspiring moment for us. Just pulling up. You know, coming from New York, we come from a very close environment. Like, you know what I mean? So you don't really get a chance to think. But this looked like Central Park. Like when I was driving, <laughs> seeing the horses, I seen the lake. I'm like, this is really dope for us to see, you know. So thank you for having us, man. It's very inspiring. Thank you. Oh, uh, man, you guys earned it. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's get the numbers right. We got 235 acres. We got no, 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 no. We, we, oh, that's when we bought it. When we bought it. But we, yeah. we, we extend. We're going to get to the extension. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We done it. Yeah, yeah we're going to we're gonna get the 87 yeah, in there. Yeah. So we, got, we, got, we got 109 yeah. rooms. We got uh, 12 bedrooms, 21 bathrooms, and a plethora of other things that's going on. The largest swimming pool in the United States. The biggest re residential pool in the U.S. Whew. Drake and Kanye can invite them. They ever met. Nah, can't with this. <laughs> All of <on>. them. <laughs> But let, let, let's get into the rosé. So, you know, our slogan, assets over liability, that's what we live by. So what is an asset? What is a liability to you? Like, how do you define an asset? How do you define a liability? I'm going to be honest. You know, I think depending on the role you play and who you are, what's a liability for one brother could be an asset for another. You understand? Let's say me owning a, a private jet, 15 passenger, you know, Let's say if it was $5.5 million, for one individual, that could be a liability. But the position I'm in, it could be an asset. And not just based on the money I get or my salary, but the individuals that surround me that I know 
would also lease this jet when I'm not using it. You know what I mean? So it's money we could get. We could take care of the maintenance, the pilot, the steward, everybody based on letting, you know, another dude or two make a move once or twice a month. Yeah, that's very fitting because the way you acquired the property, it was somebody's liability, right? It was foreclosed. JP Most Morgan definitely. Owned it, and then you came in and purchased it. But a lot of people don't understand the, the liabilities that come with having an estate of this magnitude. Uh, so what are some things or some costs that people may not be aware of that <laughs> touch the just, maintain just, just simply the air condition. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, let's talk about that. Your light bill, homie, your AC bill here. You can't fake that. That's not going to be You know how the youngsters say cap. The cap. <laughs> <laughs> cap, cap, cap yeah, cap, I mean, but cap. you can't cap that. This shit is real. So where we from, like the AC bill might be $500, but we're talking about something like this. So what would, I know there was some reports that it takes a million dollars just to maintain this on a yearly basis. What, what does some of like those, those costs look like? Man, you know, I'm going to be totally honest. Rosé don't even get to see the cost. The way my team's set up, and that's really between my mother and my sister. The way that, that get handled, you know, you know when, we, when we begin the year, it's simple as, you know, my sister may let me know, yo, your residency or what, you, what you're doing with this individual covers the expenses for living for the entire year. Everything else right there is just, that's cushion. I call that confetti. That's like being in club, live at 3 a.m. Poof. It's just falling. <laughs> and I love to look up and let the dollars hit me in the face. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, but it's, it's easy. You know what I'm saying? When I first moved into this spot and we first got it up and running, that's before I fully moved in. You know, I, I saw, you know, light bill 17K, 18K, you know, that, that ain't nothing. Yeah, I, I think one of the liabilities too, and I think you kind of flipped it to being an asset, was that you saw that there was some debt in the landscaping, right? There was some, I think, five hundred thousand dollars in debt for landscaping, and according to you, you were like, hey, I can cut the cost. I can mow the lawn myself, which led you getting to John Deere and saying, all right, we're going to cut costs, we'll do it, and also allowed you to provide jobs. Can you talk about that a little bit? Most definitely. That's that's basically how I look at everything around here. When you see my my homies, the ones that's driving me, the ones that's, these are dudes that's from my hood. These are dudes that's from my community. And like I tell my dogs that's around me, you're not just going to get rich being next to me doing one thing. You got to be ready to do five, seven, ten things. So whatever you did in the hood, that's cool. You was respected for that. But over here, we got to do this. We got to do that. We got to do this. So when I get out there on that John Deere tractor, we all out there. We cutting grass. We doing everything that needs to be done. And for me, it's better to remain hands on. I want to remain hands on because you're really paying yourself. Remain hands on. You get to see things from a whole different perspective. You know what I mean? Walking into your chicken restaurants and actually sweeping Learning how to cook the chicken, I could whip up a mean ten pieces. <laughs> you know what this reminds me of Nipsey Hussle when rest in peace to Nip. He rest was saying he was saying that um, in his early stages of his career he did everything from engineer to produce. So he was like doing that process when the engineer told him something wasn't possible, he said it is possible because I did it. So if you can't do it, get out the seat and I'll do it for you. And he was like, that really helped him in his journey because there was no part of the process that he didn't actually do himself. So nobody can pull a fast one on him or nobody can tell him this, is, this can't be done because he knew that it could be done because he actually did it. Oh man, it makes you masterful. Imagine creating a film. You wrote the film, produced the film, directed the film, edited the film, distributed the film. Can you imagine the process and what you learned doing that? It takes you to a whole nother level when you're in a room full of other directors who could be great directors, but it's a whole nother vision. It's a whole nother insight when you actually hands on. Let me ask you this. Financial literacy, something that's popular now, but it wasn't always popular, especially hip hop, you know, when did you realize, okay, I'm gonna actually turn some liabilities into assets. I need to actually boss up and actually look at this from a real business 
and it's not just entertainment. It's not just get a bag and just blow the bag. Like, when did you really have that transition, or was you always on that type of time? I can't say I was on on that type of time at all times, but most definitely as I progressed, as I elevated myself, as my finances grew, I understood what was at risk. And your whole approach changed once you have more things at risk. The same dude that you see right now that only got a box Chevy that's riding up and down the street, he a totally different person when he got $5 million at risk. You understand? So, Mm, you know, as I, as I grew, as I moved on, you know, where I'm from in Miami, one of the homies that I looked up to and one of the ones that inspired me the most, he actually was featured on America's Most Wanted. He's serving three life sentences right now. And I, I still, um, I still have, uh, you know, I still see a day of him coming home. We ain't give up yet. But when I speak to him and I ask him for advice as well, big homie, what's one of the, what's one of the uh, things you wish you could have? Um, you could have changed. And it's a dude that's been accused for over 80 homicides. And one of the things he told me was, Rose, I wish I would have um, learned to give a pass. That's something I never knew how to do, was give a square a pass, give a mark a pass. If you did anything out of line, it wasn't no pass. So you got, you understand? When he was 26, being featured on America's Most Wanted, that's one thing. But now when you're older, you realize my life was at risk. Emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence, something that was Dane was telling us about mm -hmm. that. He was like, you know, now at this point in his life, he realizes that it ain't even really worth it a lot of times. And I feel like that way of thinking not only can save your life from b being dead or in jail, but financially as well. It's Most like definitely. You in that moment and you realize this may make me feel good in the moment, but if I put this money into real estate, if I put this money into stocks, I'm going to feel good forever. It's not even a comparison. If it's something that I admire, if it's something I want, if I wake up and say, yo, I want to call Jacob and get that $3 million watch, we get it. We in that position now. Mm -hmm. But when, I, when, when I'm grinding and I'm climbing up the mountain and it's either we could go to Vegas and spend a half a million this weekend or... We get a piece of real estate. It ain't even nothing to consider. Yeah, I feel I'm like get the real estate. Th that was your mindset early, because I mean, in your book, Perfect Day to Boss Up, you, you mentioned that. You talk about how I didn't spend my advance, I didn't spend a nah. dollar from touring nah. until I saw Port of Miami hit the charts the way it did. Right. After that moment, did the mindset change? I'm like, all right, let's spend some little bit of bread. Yeah, what happened? Shit, then? Well, I, I said to myself, this shit real. Let's do some investments. We're going to most definitely enjoy it. Let's go get that Lamborghini you always wanted. Squeeze your fat ass in that car, boy. You know what I'm saying? Squeeze your fat ass in that car, boy. Custom Lambo. <laughs> you feel me? But most definitely, uh, it was still, let's take it to that next level. Because we, we, we've seen this. Mm. Honestly, am I impressed? There's very few things that's going to impress me because we've seen this. And if it's something we've seen, I mean, I can applaud you, brother. But that may be the most I could do because we, we've seen this. So, you know, the goal is let's do something we've never seen. Let's make That's what's burning the fire with, within me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And we, we got some goats that's, that's ahead of us that still can inspire us. But if it's something I've seen, all right, it's cool. Also, speaking of something that you've seen, my mom always used to tell me, she said, a smart man learned from his mistakes, a wise man learns from the mistakes of others. So it's like we also have seen a lot of entertainers, athletes go broke. Without a doubt. Was that something that was like scary to you? Of course. Every time I come through the gates, I say, damn, mm -hmm. the homie that, you know, owned this previously before me made 50 million a night. Mm -hmm. 550 million plus came through his hands. What's going to separate me from the mistakes homie made? And I began going down my mental list. Well, this is what I'm going to do different. Yeah, your man cave has to step up. You got to step your man cave up at this. Yeah, that is a start. <laughs> my man cave ain't looking good. This is, this who, is. who knew Ross had every Marvel and DC character ever created? Don't let that go over your head. Vintage. Who's, who's your favorite character? Batman.
Real nigga, man. If Bruce Wayne be on this shit, that car was something else. That Batmobile, boy. That's Voltron? That's gang. Wow. That's, that's gang. You don't got shit. Voltron. What oh, the fuck are you doing? Voltron. Oh, Voltron man. was every young nigga dream, I had boy. to watch that. Yeah. So during Corona, obviously, your number one asset was touring, and that got paused. And I feel like you had an epiphany moment when you started actually walking around the property right. and looking at things you could turn into assets. What was that process like? Because I know you talk about the, the, the baseball field that you say, you know what, I, I could turn this into an amphitheater and have comedians and people tour here. What was that process like for you? Well, really, it was just, once again, you know, having more time to spend on the promised land than I have ever, maybe, you know what I mean? So I'm walking around, I'm getting up, getting on social media. I had to ask my homie, show me how to use my story. <laughs> he showed me this how you do it. You hold it down and then you can spin it around. Okay, cool. I just began walking around barefoot, so on and so forth, just talking a little shit. But at the same time, it's time to capitalize on the moment. This will separate the real boys and men. It's a lot of dudes I saw live a certain lifestyle that came to a cease. Soon as that motherfucking fungus hit. Mm -hmm. The fungus among us. The fungus still among us. Still among us. You feel me? A lot of motherfuckers' lifestyles cease. That's a fact. It, it, it wasn't like that for Rose. Yeah, so, so while you were walking, because I know you, you, you purchased 87 acres of land that's adjacent to this property. Right. Is, is that part of that walk that you were having? Like, wait, right, right, I see right. this land, right, I can right. have it. What are the plans for that? Because I know you put, they said a rumor that you paid a million dollars for the 87 additional acres. What's the plans for, for the additional 87? Honestly, honestly, I don't want to say yet. To me, real estate has always been an asset. You can could, you could make a new car. You can't make that corner. You got to buy that corner. And if my last name on it, you got to come see me. So when you talk about your mom, your sister, your friends, how I envision this is like a corporate structure. Most definitely. And it's like the, the CEO, Empire. the CFO, the COO, and it's like a lot of things don't necessarily have to get to the CEO. Why not? Right, exactly. So talk about that. It's, exactly. You know, how did you envision that? And am I correct? That's how you kind of look at it? Like a Most definitely. Structure? Most definitely. And that's the, that's the only way I could see me having 20 current partnerships without any stress, without being burnt out actually looking forward to this shit. You understand? We looking forward to sitting down with the homies. You can imagine how many interviews I do, how many Zooms, I call them rooms, and I look forward to the shit. And how can I do that? It's because the small talk shouldn't make it to the boss. You should have somebody on your team that's so hungry that shit ain't gonna even get past them. Of course they gonna check in and run it by you because that's what you do out of respect for the boss, but you already know what the play is. And if I was the little homie next to the billionaire, it's very little that would get to him. I'm sure you remember like your first car. You remember your first investment that you made? Maybe it was real estate or maybe whatever. Do you remember the first time you invested in something? Oh man, man that shit, man. I'm sure it was something that had to do with the streets. That was my first investment. Legal, legal. You Statue know, of limitations. That was, that, was, that, was, that, was, that was my first investment, man. In, in some kind of way, I always been, been a good businessman. You know what I'm saying? I always kept my face clean and, and said what it was. And, and, and still to this day, I think that's, that may be my most valuable asset. It's my dogs and my homies that I sat down with. It is what I said it is, and that's what it's gonna be. Let me ask you this: what, what's the, what's the actual story behind this house? Because we know, you know, obviously, Avanna Holyfield used to own it. It's called the Promised Land. It's crazy. Everybody always talks about it. How did it come across your desk? Like, I, not, I believe it was auction, and it was like seven million, but you paid five point eight, so you paid well under the the asking price, and that's crazy that you can get something like right, this right. for that price. So. How did well, that even come about? Well, the story about the, the, the actual real estate, it, it was owned by um, the homie that played in uh, Smokey and the Bandit. That's who Holyfield actually purchased it from. You know what I'm saying? And um, he spent $25 million. Renovating and everything. Right, building the entire crib. Woo, woo, woo. And so, like I said, homes was something I was always fascinated about. So when me and my homie started coming up Atlanta, 
We used to ride by here all the time. Stop, pull over, smoke one, and just, God damn. You know what I'm saying? After I got my deal and my situation, I bought a million dollar home maybe two minutes from here that I still own that's right around the corner just so I could ride by it every day while I'm in Atlanta. And that's what the play was. Actually riding by one day, I saw a red sign that was on the gate that wasn't never there before. I told my homie, turn around, call my sister, hey, go this number, call these people. You know what I'm saying? And that what the play was. Hmm. I want to go back just for a second because you said, obviously, you're, you're an amazing businessman and you have a lot of assets. But what's something, a liability that you accounted during your career that you like, you know what, damn, I shouldn't have did that one? Man, you know, I had two yachts at once. <laughs> in Miami? Yeah. A hundred footer and an 80 footer. Just because. Just cause. <laughs> when you get when you go on a run like I was on, man, you just it, it was just cause and the experience of owning a, a yacht, you know, before you've ever really kicked it with somebody who owned one, is you don't realize how much time you really away from these boats. True. Every I go out of town, by the time I come back, it's something need to be done, this, that, this, that the captain, the this, the that, you know what I'm saying? I remember I took French Montana out. Shit, we was out 10 minutes and we both was handcuffed. You know what I'm saying? I had to finesse us back out. You know, it's just, you realize later on, you know what I mean? When it's just something that, a passion or something you just desire, something you just want. You, you, I ain't really put no business thought behind it. You understand? Well, the person I am now, those same yachts, I be getting more money with them. You know, at that point, I was like, man, I don't want nobody on my shit putting ashes everywhere. Turn it to an asset now. Of course. There it is. So we got to credit Ross with the pull up yacht, La Marina in the yacht. You inspired that line. You introduced him to the yacht life. Of course. There it is. <laughs> of course. French, you tell you, we had a lot of good times on that boat. So let me ask you this. We, we hear, we see, all, we see all of your different brands that you are affiliated with, from Bel Air to Rap Snacks to, of course, Wingstop. Um, how particular are you about putting your, your name on something? Like, I'm sure a lot of opportunities come through your, your right, door. Right, right, right. What is it where it's like, all right, this is something I'm gonna rock with, this is something that I'm not gonna rock with? Really, it should just be something that as soon as I see it, I fuck with that. If you've gotta sit there and try to sell me on it, it usually, I doubt it will come through. But if it's something that I just naturally fuck with, it should be a go. It should be a go. It's not just about the paper. It's something I always speak on. I walked away from seven, figure, seven figures up front for a cigarette campaign. I told them, I don't smoke squares, homie. I can't help you on that. Well, we don't need you to smoke them. I can't do it, homie. Yeah, and what's the approach? Is it a process going through the team first, or is it something like sometimes you're saying, I like this brand, find out how I can be involved. What's yeah, the I, I've done that a lot. I don't have no problem doing that. Same way I went and bought the John Deere tractor. I cut the grass a little time, a couple times and I said, it's time for us to do some business. Yeah, y'all yeah, reach out to John Deere, let them know. I started putting them on my snap. We had a conference call two weeks later. Nice. What's the vision? I came up with one right there in 20 seconds, it's easy. We need to get black farmers more involved with the culture. We need to get this, that, this, that, this, that, this, that. We need to support more of this, that, this, that. Yeah, it came naturally to me. Makes sense, it makes sense. Makes both sense and sense. It's a fact. Um, you did one of the dopest things I've seen in a long time for your son's 16th birthday. Right. I believe you, um, you brought him a wing stop. Right. Talk about that, because that was something that was very unique, very dope, very entrepreneurial. Like, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit. You know, my son, he, you know, he's a, a very mature individual. You know what I mean? He's, a, he's actually a, um, a, a great student, a great son. You understand? And he's an amazing football player as well. And he's very, he's very mature. You know what I mean? He's grew up watching me run in and out of wing stops. He's always been, come on, I'm finna go to wing stop. Let's go. Come on. I grab a broom, you get the mop. Come on, let's go. He understands that, he gets that. So I just wanted to reward him as he coming into a young man, his maturity, his maturity level and let him know, 
come on, let me give you some of these responsibilities as well. Yeah. It's not just money and paper, but it's also responsibilities. Little phone calls you sit in on here and there. Let me get your input on this and that because it's valuable. I'm just letting them know how valuable he is. And you're grooming him for the future. Most and definitely. you're providing an asset that, you know, he can have later on down in life. Most so definitely. That's why that was so dope. Because, like, you could have just got him something that's a material item. But to actually get him a business and groom him in the business, now it's like, you know, mentorship on a whole different level on right, the business right. side. Right. I think us as, us as fathers and men, we got to teach our, our youngsters how to come into manhood and be responsible and take care of yourself. And not only yourself, but your family that you gonna create. So you're not just thinking for yourself. You gotta be in a position and um, on a level to think and take care of others. Mm. Well, I don't wanna get the number wrong, but every, cause every time I, we, uh, we, we read about it, there's another Wingstop location that you've added to the portfolio. We know that McDonald's owns majority of the real estate that they put their franchises on. Is that something that you guys are envisioning long term? Like we're going to get the land and put the Wingstop locations on it, or are we leasing? What's the process now for, for you? It, it's really de depending on the situation because there are spots where we own the land mm -hmm. as well as spots where we lease the land. A lot of times when we came into positions where we bought three or four at a time because a lot of times you get offers from other franchisees. You know, we know each other, we communicate with each other. There's other franchisees that want to make a move or do this or do that. Cool. They reach out to us. What situation you in? Sometimes they own the real estate. Sometimes they don't. You know what I mean? So you got Wingstop, Thigh Stop. Two separate things? Or is this like a new venture? Or is it a branch off from the process? It's most definitely under the Wingstop umbrella, but it, it is something totally different. And that's, you know what I mean? Gotcha. Which, which was really dope. It was a concept the team brought together. I gave him my input. Charlie Morrison, the CEO, he seen the vision. I told him, let's shoot the commercial at the promised land. It shouldn't take us more than two hours, homie. We lined Rolls Royces up and told him to come to the website, and it exploded. So it's something that we most definitely extended when really it could have just been a limited time only. Last night, watching the Lakers game, the commercial ran. So make sure y'all... <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Go to that, that thigh stuff. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so to me, that's what's real cool, man. Once again, something you've never seen. Right. Something we created during the pandemic. So, you know, it's just, we got to brainstorm. We got to network. We got to communicate. On the music side, like, we hear a lot now about owning your masters, owning your publishing, and all that. How, who educated you on the importance of masters publishing because I feel like there's not a lot of mentorship, which is why a lot of artists. It's not. Artists it's not. Going. And as a and as an artist, and not to cut you off, but that's something I had to learn myself. And the sad part about it is, a lot of times, is being a young artist, I used to make songs dissing, you know, CEOs or anybody I was doing business with. When a lot of times they wasn't even in position, or they weren't even owning their masters. So it's something that you actually gotta. Oh, okay, woo, 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 woo. and so, you know, the first situation I was in was X amount of records, and of course, as I'm delivering my albums, you know, I'm, I'm learning, I'm asking more questions. Okay, okay, the bigger I got as an artist, the better attorneys I got, the more, okay, this to play, okay, you have two more albums under this contract, after that we finna renegotiate, boom, you're gonna own your masters, you're gonna do this, okay, so this to play. And so as a young artist, a lot of times you, you, you coming in the game, you're not going to own your masters. Yeah. Because not who's there to really educate them. All right, so you went from the artist. Obviously, for, let's start. You didn't start as an artist. You started out writing for people. Right, right, right. I started out as a writer. As a writer, 10 years, the process of getting to, the, to Hustling, which is the song that catapults your career. But right. I want to talk about 2014 because you said you had to make a decision based on being the owner of a label. The biggest star at the time, Meek Mill, right. outside of yourself, right. is about to go to jail, and you compromise your creative process. Can you talk about the mindset behind that and then looking back saying like, you know what, I should have never did this? Well, you know, everything I've done as a boss in that MMG, man, I, I enjoy it, and I'm proud of it. Most definitely, Meek Mill, Wale, just the whole team, Gunplay, all my squad, 
because all my homies can still be creative based on their time frame. I give everybody their freedom to do whatever the players you want to do. You your own boss, you know what I mean? Even in this partnership, you your boss. Whatever it is, let's go. I'm going to support what, what your vision is. And, you know, I don't have no regrets. Perfect day to boss up. So what made you get into the literature game and actually want to You've been dropping gems for a long time. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Your interviews always go viral, clips on Instagram, all of that. People always look at you as one of these business thought leaders. Uh, what made you actually want to say, okay, I want to actually put the pen to paper and actually put it in a book form? It goes along with everything else I'm doing. You know, to me it was really simple. One time for Neil Belkin, you know what I mean? My homie who actually, you know, sit next to me and just put the pen down as I'm, you know, talking my shit 6.37 in the morning. And that's what it is. I feel the film is next. I already got the first scene of the, the film I want to do. You write, you writing the film? I'm, of course. Already got the first scene. The first scene going to be dope, right? <laughs> <laughs> the first scene going to be dope, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to be getting ready. I'm finna fuck a chick, right? <laughs> Of you know course, why not? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah, how you yeah. gotta start a movie, yeah. and right? So And so I've been out in the street all day. I take my money out. I put my pistol on the dresser, and then I got a shit bag. So I take the shit bag off, put it on the dresser. Like, Some of the shit kind of spilled the chicks, you know. <laughs> <laughs> like a catheter? R romantic comedy. Oh, no, 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 no. We finna be getting to the money, you know what I'm saying? We gonna be getting to the money. It's gonna be, the, it's gonna be epic. It's gonna, it's be, gonna epic. be number one. It's gonna yeah, be yeah, number yeah. One. But I just feel like you know, when it comes to being creative, we all need to take advantage of our assets. Let's take advantage of it. That's something we could do. If we could communicate, we most definitely are authors. You naturally are author, homie. And then if you most definitely got something that's valuable for others to absorb, you are author. So let's not leave that. Let's not leave that untapped. One of the things you've done, you said that promising and pays for itself. Because you've, you've turned it into an asset. And since you brought up film, obviously we know Superfly was, was shot here. And we, we all know that Coming to America uh, 2 right. was also shot here. What are some other ways that you've, you've used this property as an asset to generate more revenue? I mean, just from, from of course, film, different films, videos, visuals, the automobiles, and the list just goes on. The list goes on. You'll be amazed how many offers I get every week to, for marriages and this and that. Yo, we just want to rent it. How much is it per hour? It's just, you know, it, it, we've, we've, we've um, you know, put it in the, on a platform and in a position where it's just something that people from different countries want to come. How can we experience this? You know what I'm saying? For people who visit in the city, who visit in Atlanta, they come out here and just, I had to tell the security, let's not waste energy trying to stop people from taking a picture in front of the gate. It's like Buckingham Palace. We can't fucking stop it. You know what, it's really, it's a really smart idea because it reminds me of the Versace mansion in Miami where now people get married there, mm -hmm. they have bar mitzvahs there. So it's like, all right, you have this amazing, you know, estate and now it's actually turned into a tourist destination. It People is. have parties here, yeah. and it's like, now, once again, turning the liability into it's an asset, asset yeah. and now you actually can make money. It, most definitely, visuals you wouldn't even imagine. The, the video list could go on and on. From Skip Marley, they was playing soccer. You, you wouldn't have knew that that was on the promised land. You know what I'm saying? It's incredible. Yeah, yeah, it just, it just, <laughs> that's, that's just the list just goes on, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So, and, and that's one thing we're about, good business. Let's keep it simple. Let's do good business. That's what it's about. How important being a boss, everybody always says boss, but they don't understand the responsibilities of being a boss. So how important is it to be diplomatic as a boss? Because it's like, as a boss, people have all kinds of issues. They come to you with everything. You might want to actually physically attack somebody, but you can't. You got to deal with this person this way, that way. Like, what's the... We actually, we actually spoke of it in, in the book. You got to manage your emotions. You must manage your emotions. You got to master the art of taking the L. Because being a boss, you're going to lose, you're going to win. You know? So you got to be able to grow and take from, from whatever the situation is. 
regardless of what it is. And sometimes I may not be the best at dealing with my emotions. Sometimes I do. It's like that, though. But overall, you know what I mean? Um, I leave my door open for good business. And that's more important in the way I eat my emotions. You ever just wake up like, what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck happened? I do it all the time. That's what I'm trying to tell you. you nigga. <laughs> I look over there, look at this shit, nigga, this shit, y'all niggas crazy. But you know, it just remind you, it ain't nothing nobody can't stop you from doing. I don't know how many cars we got. That motherfucker so clean. That station wagon, come on, man, I hadn't even seen one of them before. I ain't drove that one, that one, or that one yet. <laughs> That's the real old school. Trailer. That's a real old school That's station old wagon, for real, for real. I spend 100 on the old school every month, 100. Every month, I don't even, I call in, hey man, it, it's, it's how I like it, send it. You know, one of the things you said about the, the assets uh, generating revenue was cars. And I know a lot of times you do them for shoots and sometimes for films. Have we ever thought about, because most people think cars are depreciation assets, uh, liabilities, but they can be an asset, right? Have you ever thought about renting them out like on a platform like Turo or something like that? No, I haven't, you know what I'm saying? My old schools, my classics, I really haven't, you know what I mean? But, you know, the way I look at them, they're they becoming more valuable. You know, my Chevrolets, the 55, 56, 57s, I just think about the position my, my son, you know, my kids will be in when they celebrate that 100 year anniversary for those 57 Bel Airs and how much will they be worth then? I'm, I'm sure to be in the seven figures. If my old school costs more than your new school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And for everybody that's watching, if you got old schools, if you are, if you do want to sell your old school, I'm finna give you some game. I don't give a lot of people game like this. But if you got an old school you want to sell, let it get dusty, let the dust settle. Cause when they come to buy it, tell them, you know, hasn't been driven in three years. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm here, I'm here and talks about the motherland. I believe it's pronounced Tanzania. You looking at some real estate over there? That there's some rumors about that? Man, what what I had was I actually had an interview and I was speaking with one of the, the cool DJs over there. And you know, he invited me over and you know, I put it on the table and I told him, yo, if I was to to come out there and cop a crib, what areas should I look in? What areas should I look at? You know what I mean? And he, he told me a few areas and you know, I just I just left it at that. Okay. You know? But you know, um, I love to travel. I want to see the world. You never know, I may cop something overseas yet. I got a little traveling to do though. Well, one of the themes throughout uh, Perfect Day to Boss Up is growth. And you spoke about it when you said, you know, keeping your cool. Um, you talked about the, the incident with the, the reporter who said that they created the story of that, yo, he's a correctional officer. Uh, and how that ended up costing you hundreds of thousands. You spoke about the incident at the Breakfast Club where you said, you know what, I was trying to make a joke that just didn't come across correctly. What did it take to you to get to this point um, of, of growth and maturity? Because now it becomes like, I think for a generation of people, it's like, yeah, Rick Ross known for music, but at this point he's a boss and now he's a mature man and a father. Were there some, some processes that were going on in your life that brought you to this point? It's so obvious, you gotta have respect. You gotta have respect, you gotta know your role, you gotta play your position. You gotta know what the deal is. You gotta honor the set, man. That's how it go. And when you're one of them people who, you honor the set, you understand your role, hey, maybe some things come a little easier. When I see motherfuckers who live a little reckless sometimes, you could block your blessings, man. You could be sitting right next to the next play that could have put you in position where to join the three comma club. Yep. I, think, I think one of my favorite lines you ever said was the bank account caught the Holy Ghost. Yeah. And so what, what number was the Holy Ghost number for you? <sighs> or how many commas? Man, I, you, know, you know, to me, you got to understand the type of mother I got. You know what I mean? She a real boss. She, she you know, she bought a business. You know, she put me first, you know what I'm saying? When she call you and say, God damn, son. <laughs> God damn this shit, real. Like, 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because I never, I never got those calls from her. And I've been getting money a long time now. But it's like, yo, it's different when she called you and said, and I say, I told you this shit real. You know what I'm saying? Because it, there, there are numbers right. that when they come, you got to stop what you're doing and like, yo. Levels. This shit real. Yeah. I mean, you said the line twice. So I know it had yeah, to be yeah, real. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, you had a banker called the Holy Ghost. I want, I want to ask you two questions about that. My the lawyer did too. <laughs> <laughs> the first one, as you can see, we, we listen to rap a lot. So once again, Nipsey, when he was like, when you, freak, when you make your first million cash, you're going to feel the pressure. How is it, when, when you made your first million, because we always talk about a million dollars like growing up. Like it was like a millionaire. And unfortunately, the vast majority of people never going to be able to see a million dollars. So when you saw your first million, how did that feel? Like was that just an ill moment for you? And when did you, <sighs> when did you start feeling, did you start feeling that type of pressure? Like, damn, I'm on the other side of this thing now. When I sat down with Jay and L.A. Reid, you know, I got a seven-figure advance right off the rip for, you know, my first album. I wasn't satisfied, though. And most definitely, that might have been at the top of the, the list. I scratched that bitch out, you feel me? But it's too much more history to make. So like I said, I got that advance and I, I hadn't spent shit. I already had a crib. I already had my 745 beaming, you know, what other little whips I had just from doing my thing. So I just stayed focused on the grind. That whole first year, when you go back and listen to all my records, really from 06, my voice hoarser than the motherfucker, because I was doing shows and verses every day. I ain't give a fuck. I wasn't leaving nothing on the table, nothing. And that's still my mentality right now. That's still my mentality right now. Me and Jeezy was just having a conversation about this a day or two ago. I'm still that same person, regardless of how whatever the fuck we got. If somebody come over here and they talking about, I'm going to tell them, come drop that off and bring the rest the next day. That's just rosé. That's just, it, it don't matter. Never get satisfied. No. Why not? Let's do something we ain't never seen. Make history. That's what it's all about. If it ain't history, that shit small talk, homie. What, what's the, like, where you at now? A uh, crazy amount of money. I'm sure you got, you know, accountants, you got estate planning attorneys, all of that. But how important is it to actually keep an eye on that? Because we interviewed Fat Joe, shout out to Joey. He was telling us he went to jail because his accountant was supposed to be paying his taxes for him, but his accountant was actually stealing the money. He didn't actually realize it, and by the time he realized it, it was too late. I repeat to that nigga, Rose. I repeat to that nigga. I repeat to that nigga. I repeat that nigga. I would pull some of that. That Viola, that nigga play. Nigga, you crazy. This is the Mafia music video part two. Oh, man. God bless you, nigga. God bless you, nigga. You crazy. But I mean, do you, do, you, do you think about stuff like, do you have like people that's wa accountants watching accountants? Like how do you make sure that that doesn't happen? You don't really need accountants watching accountants. You just need the right one. Too many motherfuckers watching motherfuckers. This, you expecting problems. I ain't gonna do that. Once you've been put in position, you're liable and you will be held accountable and you're responsible for your job that you're getting compensated for. And we only here for one thing, we want to win. I want to see you win just as much as I win, brother. Now, if you can't handle this, if there's too much paper for you, bow out. Check out. Because they ain't going to call me and tell Rosé that the money been gone and the people did it and the did 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 I'm going to say I'm going to hang up. You call back in five minutes and tell me you made a mistake and called the wrong nigga. Mickey Tarantino, uh, like a true from uh, Casino, remember? <laughs> remember that scene? Shit, y'all niggas crazy. <laughs> y'all niggas crazy. Y'all niggas crazy. Uh, <laughs> give him 10. Uh, so, the promised land model, because I, I think this could be replicated. And, right? Can't be replicated. No, no, in the, sense of, in the sense of, for you, in the sense of you found a property that was undervalued, you bought it you turn it into an asset. And I'm thinking long-term, or even now, 
Is this something that you look to do in other parts of the country? Because you got one here in Georgia. I'm sure you got property in Miami. Are there other parts of the country that you, you're interested in doing something similar to this? I mean, you know, this is a unique situation, and I'm sure, you know, um, it'll be hard to recreate this. But am I still looking for real estate? Am I still looking for property investments, so on and so forth? Of course, brother. We ain't going to never stop doing that. I've won on every piece of real estate I have, even though I wasn't, I didn't get into it to flip it and, no, nah, I just got them and copped them. I still got them. I bought a crib that the homie Amari Stoudemire sold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I still haven't slept in that bitch once. But guess what? The value is I could sell that same house for possibly maybe $3 million more than I purchased it for. And when I walked in there, I told the lady, this is my house. Yeah. The real estate agent was like, what do you mean? <laughs> 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 Baby, <laughs> Miss Rose, how you doing? <laughs> Give me my shit, you know what I'm saying? And, and that's what it was. You know what I'm saying? And, and to, for me, real estate has always been a good thing, and that's something my mom always told me. Because what we grew up at, them houses might have been $50,000 at the time. Them same houses, shit, a half a million dollars now. Yeah, we've seen the gentrification happen in Miami. Winwood. It was so crazy. I, I was in Wynwood years ago, and I was driving through Wynwood. I had never really seen a neighborhood that bad. Like, it was like, it was like crazy. I'm like, it's like the 80s. Fast forward five years later, it was like the hottest speakeasies, taco spots. I'm taco like, spots, tequila oh, joints, crazy. everything. They moved all the bums out, all the niggas out, all the blacks out, all the Hispanics out force the homeless motherfuckers to go on the other side and they get into the money. That's a fact. And Rose sitting here saying, okay, we got to know how we look at things now. Mm -hmm. We can't look at it for the current state that it's in. What's the potential? What's the potential? Because owning a shitty building on the corner that they knocked down 15 years later and put a high rise on could have made you $25 million. Yeah. That's what Jay said. Yeah. I could have bought a building in Dumbo. Five million years later, it's 20 million. That's I'm how feeling. I'm feeling. Dumbo. Yeah. That's a fact. So is that something you're looking to do? Definitely go back to, or feel a responsibility to go back? We most definitely. To more educated? We most definitely buying invest. shit. We buying shit without a doubt. Okay. And we, we being that example, whether it's in Miami, whether it's in uh, Mississippi, where, wherever it's at, it don't matter. We getting in all the, all the areas that we fuck with. Cannabis, shout out to my partner, Burner, we finna do big things. I look forward to opening my first goddamn dispensary on Collins Ave, and that bitch gonna make a million a day. Is that separate from Cookies, or is that in partnership with Cookies? Yeah, it's a partnership I did with Burner. You know what I'm saying? That's been my favorite strand since for 15 years. So once it was, yeah, it's a no-brainer, that shit easy. Yeah, we, we've been, well, there's some people that we know that have uh, <laughs> frequently visited Cookies. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But it's a, it's a, it's a gold mine, right? It's, it's, a cash, it's a cash business. Man, that shit is a, a billion dollar enterprise without, without, a de without a doubt. It's a billion dollar, you know. And it's situation. obviously something that you're interested in. Oh, most definitely. I love it. It's too easy. Have you, have you um, ever thought about like having some level, because you're so wise, so smart. But unfortunately, a lot of people still coming into music, or just entrepreneurs in general, some level of mentorship on a wide, wide most, scale. Most definitely. Rose Academy. Most, most definitely, and that's what we just had a couple weeks ago. We called it the first annual Boss Up. Yeah, we was out of town for that, but a couple of our friends went in. Yeah, heard it yeah my partner, Alex Bostick, he's sitting in here. He, he back in, he over there somewhere. And once again, he plays several roles on the team, but um, that's what we did. We got 40 other entrepreneurs in the room together over a weekend, and we all just... Shit I did, mastermind. That's all we did. And man, it was so valuable. I learned from them and vice versa. We learned from each other. Now let's share each other's platforms. Let's share each other's connections. Let's share each other's resources. We watched certain people growing up, and we, we, we idolized them, number one, because of their talent in music, number two, because of their business acumen, but unlike them, you're actually involved in educating the process and, and going through the process with the people, right? We watched you grow into this 
We well, always said you was the boss, but we've actually seen it come to fruition. Right. You, we were you, it, were we you super intentional it. about that from day one? Like, yeah, I'm the boss. Nobody made a sound, but let me show you how I am the boss. Yeah, without a doubt. I got to show you. Every damn hustler from the day we came in the game and we still are. And we still are. And there's so much more to do. And I won't be satisfied until I've done something that's never been seen. And that's just not a dollar figure. It's also, yeah, most definitely, it's, it's, it's plays being made. This is a special time that we in in life. When you look around and you see crypto and all this shit, this just like when the Commodore 64s was first created and motherfuckers got to see a computer for the first time. That's what we at. We in a revolutionary part of life right now. And it's time to be a part of it. And that's just one of the things. You see the platforms, media, and all this shit. You're creating your own TV channels right now. Yeah, we know the thing, too, about that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, yeah. It, yo, man, I'm inspired. That's a fact. Your, your partner, Tommy Duncan, in, in uh, Jet Doc, right. he told us, he said, every industry is up for disruption right now because of social media. There's nothing that can't be disrupted right now. Right, right, right. It's too many, it's too many ways to make a the goal used to be a million. It's a B now. Now it ain't even a billion no more. Yeah. That's become local. Yeah. Mark, 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 Mark Cuban said that to us. That's he said, local look, now. if you have a million dollars, you should be walking on eggshells right now. You should be scared. You should be scared That's because you're- A million? If you have a million dollars. Oh, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> nigga, if you got one ticket, boy, you got to Nigga, 10. Ten. Minimum. You're 10. Minimum. You need at least 10 to be comfortable. Least, yeah. No. 10, you should be scared. Ooh, okay. That's when you plan, when you pitching on the mound like Rose. And no excuses gonna be accepted. Mm -hmm. We ain't accepting no excuses. We really coming to get it. It's one thing when motherfuckers rapping, making songs, and talking about this, that, this, that, 20 million, and then. This shit real right here. This shit real. We accumulating. Fuck all that fancy shit, because it's a real big difference in who doing it and who talking about doing it. It's the evolution. Like, I feel like our heroes growing up, they never got a chance to, to mature. Grow. Like, when Big said the rings and things you sing about bring, bring them out. out, that was what he knew. He was 23 years old. but. It ain't really about rings. Right. It's about no. We most definitely no. But I, I'm saying that's that's important. No, I, I that's important. I understood exactly no, what. But I'm saying was, that you you. Yeah. This is what you know. What I'm saying now yeah. it's like the yeah. evolution yeah. of yeah. the businesses, the money that you're talking about. Bring him out without a doubt. We never we me? never got to see him. And grow we never to, got to see him grow to that yeah, point. We never but he but dollars. he most definitely gave us the vision. Absolutely. And and, and said it. Yeah. Cause that that was the pace Big was on, you know what I mean? And he, he inspired me in a whole nother yeah. way. That's what I said. You know what I'm saying? Big reincarnated. You said. You know what I'm saying? The way he inspired me and gave me game, and there's no way just listening to his level of maturity, his vibe, and his rhymes, you could have told me. Even though I knew it, you couldn't have told me Big was 23 back then. The influence he had on the game, man, that shit was priceless. But we most definitely, he was letting you know. Because every, every time I, I was watching YouTube back then and he was in a, a burgundy Land Cruiser, I was like, I need a Land Cruiser. <laughs> I want a Land Cruiser, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you, you, you brought up crypto. And I know um, you actually were in the space and somewhat, maybe a partnership with, with G Sheba. Can you talk to us about what the, what the partnership is and, and the purpose? You know, they, they came through, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, they put some things on the table. They was with a homie of mine. And, um, you know, I just embraced them. I embraced them, showed them a lot of love. You know what I mean? But, you know, right now, there's so many, I'm getting approached about crypto, NFTs, this, that. Oh, man, Rose, you can make a million on the NFT there. I say, I'm not really inspired, homie. I'm one of them dudes, you got to drop the bag on the table. Poof. <laughs> <laughs> or the confetti got to fall. Poof. <laughs> Other than that, you know, because it's a lot of talking. It's a lot of talking. All that shit, stocks, all that shit. It's a lot of talk. Oh, Rosa, boy, we made so much money. Then why you even telling me about it? 
Because if I was making all that money, you talking about it, I wouldn't even be telling you motherfuckers. I'd be running that shit up so no, much. That's, that's, what, that's what we run into the problem, though. If we don't, if we, if we have education, right? No, I'm just saying, because, because when are you going to show us the dudes that's really... All I ever seen the dudes from the stocks and all that, I seen the Bernie Madoffs and all that shit. <laughs> and for years, they thought them dudes was winning big. But once again, I, I've, I've never really had experience in those areas. So guess what? The things I knew how to do was buy, go and buy real estate, something I could touch. Right. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I stuck with. Now, I've been approached by some homies that's in good positions. And I see them, they getting paper, they getting money, they telling me about the, the, the crypto, the this and that, the this and that. But I'm not afraid to say Rosé moving in that area extremely slow. Go with what you know. Oh, man, straight up. That's, that's Warren Buffett's philosophy. Cheers. You, you, you know Warren, Warren Buffett, the, what, the third richest man in the world? Second? To, top 10, top 10. Top 10. He made all his money from stocks and investing. So during the dot-com boom, when everybody was investing in all these dot-com companies, he never invested in dot-com companies because he said he just didn't understand it. And everybody was saying, like, he's old, he's outdated, he don't know what he's doing. Dot-com crashed. Everybody lost money. He didn't lose any money. And his whole thing was like, I can't be swayed by the whims of emotion. I'm, I'm, this is my lane. I can't go into something I don't know. I don't feel and, comfortable. And I'm not, I'm not afraid to say that. I'm not afraid to say that. Now, we'll roll, you know, will I shoot the dice? Of course. You know, I got homegirls, this and that. Oh, yeah, this and then Dodge coin. <laughs> 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 oh, this shit did this. I mean, I'll give you a couple dollars to share, you know, yeah, do a few things. But I'm not even going to ask where it's at three months later because the majority of the time they don't even bring it up no more. They ain't going to bring it up. They ain't going to call you. They're not texting like, yo. <laughs> That shit you gave me, that shit is that. They, yo, they fall back, man, and they just they, be chilling. They, they fumble the bag. Before yo, they drop the ball. Before we wrap, I want I want to ask you, you know, just being here, I'm I'm thinking about like the Rockefeller estate mm -hmm. and different. This is the kind of ideas that I'm getting. So, this this legacy of Rockefeller and names like that is that something that you are actually thinking about when you you know when you're no longer here, your family carrying on tradition like the Kennedys, the Rockefeller. Like I said, this is the inspiration that I'm getting just sitting in this, in this vibe. So, well, the Carnegie's well, yeah, so like that. Well, most definitely, this is bigger than me, and that's my goal for this all to be much bigger than me. You know what I'm saying? If it was just for me, you know, we we we'd have tapped out already. We'd say we good. This shit bigger than me. You know what I mean? Yeah, the Williams legacy. Generational wealth. Why not? Why not? Let's create something that's never been done, man. But how is important? How important? Unfortunately, they say most most family wealth is done after the second generation. The third. Third generation. Right. But for black families, it's like one generation. Yeah. Education is a big part of that. How important? Because it's like it's one thing to just have money, but then if the people behind you aren't educated, they just going yeah. fuck it up. It kind it kind of goes with that theory where like. So the first generation goes through struggle, right? They go through hardship, but they lack the education. Second generation saw the struggle, but they provide the education. They've generated wealth. The third generation never saw the struggle, so they kind of fumbled it. So in that light, like, what do you do to ensure that generations have the knowledge, have the education to keep the, the name going? Well, I do, you know, what you see what I did with my son, at 16, I think those are the best examples you can do because, of course, I speak with them, I talk with them, I let them see what we got going on. You know what I'm saying? I say some cool shit that I feel, you know, that they could tap in with. I send it to them. I send them links. I send them this. Listen to this. Check this out. You understand? But most definitely, they got to want it as much as you do. You know what I mean? I let them see. I let them see what's going on. You see the cars. You see this, but you got to see the hard work. You got to see the grind, and you got to want it more than I do. If not, it's not going to last. Right. That's, I think that's the challenge, right? Cause yeah, you got to want it. Yeah, it's, it's the passion. Yeah. You can't just because if you, you could build a, a, a $25 billion empire, but if whoever next in line don't really want it, shit, it's regardless if you're my child or not. If you don't want it, shit, I'm going to put somebody in position that want it because <laughs> we got to keep it.
Call yeah, your cousin without you a doubt. Yeah. But it's all about the passion. And if you don't want it, that's fine too. I'm not calling you a failure because everything ain't for everybody. You understand? Some people may just want to play tennis on Saturday and Sunday and do yoga and shit like that. But you see what we're doing over here. You see what we got going on. That's so important. Family business and educating, having people work the ranks. Yeah. Uh, we should have a rosé succession. And you got to want it. You got to want it. At this level, how we plan. You see that in your, obviously your son, uh, but do you see that in, in your children or maybe even other relatives? Like, do you see, like, all right, this person's going to be a star. He's going to carry it. He's going to be the CEO. He, you see that? Well, I'm going to be honest. You know, when it come to my kids, you know, I always see the best in them anyway. You know what I mean? And I don't put no pressure on them, um, you know, because they all still young. They all still young right now. I ain't putting no pressure on them right now to be in this position, but most definitely you see what we got going on and are you ready to get some money? And they done all made it clear. Oh, I, I got to get me some money. I ain't even tripping. You know what I'm saying? And that's what it's about. And you got to find a way to enjoy it. Let's enjoy it. So you actually could wake up every day and come do this shit. Let's enjoy it. That's what it's about. We got to enjoy this shit. Let's enjoy working hard. Let's enjoy winning. Of course. Always a pleasure, my brother. It's too easy, my brother. Thank you for the hospitality. The biggest boss that we've seen thus far. Yes, yes. <laughs> and we just, we just getting warmed up, man. Let's make more history. Yeah, we just made more history. Why not? Why not? Why not?